Hello and welcome to another review by Flight Sim Global. I'm Tom and today we will be taking a look at Orbix's Australia version 2 available for FSX and prepared. The product contains 8 million square kilometers of coverage, over 370 upgraded and over 280 new airports, over 50 photo reel areas, updated coastlines, waterways, roads, and rail networks, many points of interest and more. The installed size is just under 25 gigabytes. To preface this review, I have never owned Orbix's Australia V1, so this review will be without any comparison between the two products. I also do not currently own any Australian airports other than the ones Orbix offers as freeware on their website, so this review will also not contain any visuals or descriptions of scenery blending between developers' products. I started my journey around Australia in the center, flying in and out of various airports along the way. For those unfamiliar, the desert interior of the country is commonly referred to as the Outback. Much of the land here is incredibly barren and arid with lots of red-colored rock and sand. There are also a large number of salt lake beds, dunes, and miles upon miles of desert that make for great sightseeing flights from high up. My only complaint with this area is that some of the lake bed photoreal was noticeably blurry when transitioning back into standard texture types Orbix has used, even with their recommended settings. I only noticed this in the lower altitude range, so if you are cruising over in an airliner at high altitude, it should be relatively unnoticeable. My next area of exploration was on the southwest coast near Perth. Here I wasn't as impressed with the scenery. While the road and waterways looked accurate, the texturing looked more generic. This may just because I've been used to using FTX Global for so long and the Orbix collection of textures is starting to look generic to me, but there wasn't really anything noteworthy that I could pick out in this region. Orbix's Jared Marshall is however working on a dedicated Perth scenery so there will most likely be an improvement in this area, but with the purchase of another product. Next, I headed off to the east to check out Melbourne and Sydney. The intricate coastline of Sydney was well modeled from what I could tell, and the Sydney Harbour Bridge and Opera House were good points of interest to visit. Again, I did think the texture work around the city could use some more work, given how prominent of an area it is, but it looks good nonetheless. Melbourne, on the other hand, was a completely different story. I was absolutely floored when I saw the level of detail that went into it. The level of autogen buildings and individually modeled buildings is staggering. And not only did it look good, but it also performed very well on my system. Melbourne is the only city in Australia V2 to utilize Orbix's cityscape technology, and I honestly wish they would use it in more places as well. Some buildings just had an unbelievable amount of intricacy for a flight simulator structure that wasn't on an airport or under an approach path. The transition to and from the photoreal textures and upgraded textures was, however, slightly jarring. While the effect is mitigated using major roadways as transition points, it is still slightly noticeable. The last areas I checked out were Tasmania, Adelaide, and the Great Barrier Reef. All of these areas were similar to the texture and mesh detailing of Central Australia. It looks great from a wide range of altitudes with appropriate looking autogen levels that can suit a wide range of flying styles, be it bush, GA, or airliner. The points of interest in the area are well modeled and fun to seek out with the help of the included KMZ file that you can use with Google Earth. The land class throughout these areas and the ones mentioned earlier were absolutely well crafted and always one of my favorite parts about Orphix products. Night lighting around the major cities is well done and give a good impression of the higher population density, while the more barren landscapes, lack of lights reasonably does the opposite. The lights didn't seem to have any noticeable impact on performance for my system. Seasonal variation also looks good. 
For a moment, I did forget that summer in the northern hemisphere meant winter in the southern hemisphere, but once I remembered that important fact, everything looked as I expected it to. No complaints here. Australia V2, like most Orbix products, comes with a control panel that lets you customize certain levels of detail based on your individual performance requirements. You can turn on or off wind farms, lighthouses, power lines, objects, dynamic lights, and prepared version 4, and more. Obviously, with Australia being such a large country and me being a lone individual with limited time, I could not possibly check out every single location for accuracy. So, for the first two weeks that this review is up, I will try to get screenshots of any area that someone requests in the comments and post them on our Facebook page to help some of you that may be on the fence about purchasing this product. Please drop a like on our page to see when the images are posted. The link is in the description. That being said, Orbix's Australia version 2 is definitely representative of the country based on the information I am able to compare against online. The scenery is a definite upgrade over default FSX or repair textures and definitely a worthwhile upgrade over FTX Global if you fly in the country often. The country offers such a wide range of landscapes just begging to be explored and Orbix is definitely a leading expert on the area given their roots. There are a few areas that could still use some more attention to detail to help equalize the quality across the product as a whole, but overall it is still an improvement over what I had previously, even in the less impressive areas. Once again, thank you for joining me for this review, and as always, happy landings.